writer Joshua Sager, S-A-G-E-R, has, uh, I believe it's a uh, it's salon, uh, basically uh, took a look at all the polling across all the major issues that one could perceive in the context of a partisan divide, particularly in the context of whether or not this is a center-right country as the establishment would have you believe. According to Gallup polling, 59% of Americans think that U.S. wealth should be more evenly distributed. Which is also um, stunning when you couple it to the fact that Americans think it's more distributed now than it actually is. 69% of Americans oppose any cuts to Social Security and Medicare, even in order to cut the deficit. Only 23% support such cuts. 59% oppose cuts on programs assisting the poor in order to address the deficit. Between 60 and 80% of Americans support increasing taxes on the wealthy. 71% of Americans support increasing the minimum wage to $10.10. .10. 54 percent of Americans support labor unions. Only 39% disapprove of them. 37% of Americans think we spend too much on defense, while only 28% think we spend too little. 59% of Americans support gay marriage. 34% oppose marriage equality. 54% of Americans support keeping abortion legal in all or most cases, while only 40% support making abortion illegal in all or most cases. 51% of Americans agree, disagree with the Supreme Court's decision to strike down Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act. Only 33% support the decision. 62% of Americans support the Paycheck Fairness Act. 58% of Americans support legalizing marijuana. 68% of Americans support a pathway to citizenship. 81% of Americans support a universal, universal background check for all gun purchases. 73% of Americans believe climate change is real. 52% of Americans say it will be a very serious problem if we don't implement policies to stop it. We're living in a center-left country that is dominated by center-right politicians, media, leaders. And that is problematic. And we see it reflected in everything, right? You see it uh, reflected in the media constantly, even on foreign policy issues. We know that it is reflected in the way that Congress legislates. We've seen studies as to what happens when we're talking about the policy preferences of the wealthy, which on an economic front tend to be more right-leaning, we know, too, that the way that these majorities are built is by appealing to the right on social issues as a way to drive them to the polls. That is the case. All of that is meaningless, of course, without any type of political outlet. Well, it's not meaningless, but it's problematic without a political outlet for a lot of these issues because it's really hard to motivate people to vote, particularly in off-year elections, if you don't have a national party that is actually giving them, that is being proactive about giving them a reason to vote. You know, we're supposed to just rely on the idea that the right wing is giving a proactive reason to vote. But the Democratic Party still fails to provide some type of national agenda to motivate these people to vote. I mean, I will vote against the Republicans every time. 
most of the people listening will vote against the Republicans any time. But for those people who are not following politics on a daily basis, you need to pierce through that by actually being proactive. 